And now, ladies and gentlemen, we are set with our main event of the evening. Ten rounds in the heavyweight division. First to make his way to the ring, fighting out of the red corner. From Switzerland, please welcome Arno Gerzai! Well, what a moment in the career of Arnold Jurgi, the man nicknamed the Cobra, making his way towards the boxing ring for his 30th professional contest tonight. Born in Kosovo, man who escaped the ravages of war in that country when the family relocated to Switzerland when he was just 15 years of age. Soon afterwards, he found the noble art, and since that time, he has compiled an impressive resume in both the amateur and the professional ranks. 55 fights as an amateur, winning 40, 30 of them inside the distance. Three-time national Swiss champion, three-time silver medalist as well. And as a professional, he has compiled a perfect ledger so far, but he has never faced anything like this type of atmosphere and most certainly hasn't faced anything like this caliber of opponent that he's going to share a boxing ring with tonight. But he brings plenty of ambition, he brings heavy hands, and he brings a six foot five frame into the boxing ring. The man alongside him in the spectacles is Angelo Bellina, and he opines the articulate Italian Swiss that David Hay is an old man, and this man with his ambition and punching power is going to derail the ring return of David Hay by scoring a spectacular victory here tonight. He's characterized the fight as Apollo Hay versus Rocky Jurjai. Characterizing David Hay as a millionaire with a gilded lifestyle who really doesn't have the heart for the hurt business anymore. So plenty of big talk coming principally from the trainer and manager of Arnold Jurjai. But how will he cope with what is the biggest test of his professional career to date? Sharing the ring with the former two-weight world champion in the form of David the Haymaker Hay. And next to make his way to the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, former cruiserweight world champion, former heavyweight world champion from South London, David! of the arrival of the Haymaker. He's awaiting the knock to begin his ring walk for the 30th professional contest of his career. Now you see that WBA strap that he won in the heavyweight division by toppling the tallest, heaviest heavyweight champion in history when he went on the road to Germany in November 2009 to defeat Nikolai Valuev. He wants to scale those heights in the heavyweight division once again. And this, the second contest of his ring return, after the 131 second destruction over Mark DeMori, who somehow had a ranking of 10th in the WBA. He made short work of that opponent. He was happy to divest himself of any ring rust that may have accumulated during his enforced three and a half year layoff. But he is all smiles as he approaches the arena because he is approaching his place of work, his place of business, and the place where he feels most comfortable. Said that he's born to be a boxer, said that he discovered his talent as a three-year-old toddler. And since that time has dedicated himself to being the very best he can be. And he feels that at his best, he is the very best in the world. So it's a confident march towards the boxing ring. He's facing an opponent that he fully expects to dispatch in impressive fashion, but it comes with a fair amount of pressure because on this ring return, David Hay knows that there is no margin for error. He not only has to win, 
he has to look good doing it in order to keep himself relevant in the heavyweight division. He's got the temperament and he feels that he still has the physical tools to do that as he breaks into a beaming grin at the back of the O2 Arena. On the ring walk, to his familiar anthem of eight notes stopping us now. Been using this tune since his successful challenge for the unified cruiserweight titles when he fought Jean-Marc Mornek in Paris. And for the most part, there have been glory nights for that one aberration against Vladimir Klitschko when he tried to unify the heavyweight titles. And now he finds the landscape altered considerably. The Titans Tyson Fury removed the Titans from the iron grip of Dr. Steelhammer Vladimir Klitschko. He was then stripped of the IBF title. Charles Martin won it. And Anthony Joshua in this very arena Dispatched Charles Martin in the second round to grab himself a portion of the heavyweight title. David Hay wants to get himself back in that mix, and he knows that impressive performances are crucial. He really didn't learn much in his outing after that three and a half year absence against Mark DeMurray, other than the fact that he is still box office and that he can still bang. You present a stationary target to David Hay and allow him to tee off with that haymaker right and that big left hook. The odds are you're going to be put on the floor and knocked out of the contest. But how will he fare against the higher level of opposition? He still feels that he has the equipment, the tools, the timing, the reflexes and the punching power to get back to the very top. And this is another step in what he feels will be the rebuilding process. Really soaking up the love that is cascading down from every seat in the O2 Arena here. And taking his time on the way to the boxing ring. Where Arnold the Cobra Zhejai is waiting rather pensively in the red corner. David Haig making him endure this weight. With his new trainer Shane McGuigan steps between the strands. Hold them open, hold them open for David Haig. But he is savoring every moment of this ring walk. So into the boxing ring. A quick high five with all of the officials in the MC before taking up residence in the blue corner. There we see the tail of the tape. Arnold Jajai, taller by two inches, heavier by some 13 pounds. So he has the edge in physical assets, but he most certainly won't have the edge in speed, and we suspect he won't have the edge in punching power. Can David Hay demonstrate those qualities with his superior speed as well? Odds are, given the knockout percentages of these fighters, this contest is not going to go the scheduled 10-round distance. Well, ladies and gentlemen, from the sold-out O2 Arena here in London, England, it is time for the main event of the evening. Ten rounds of boxing this schedule in the heavyweight division. Presented by Haymaker Promotions and sponsored by IM360, Maxi Muzzle, and Voltero. Sanctioned by the Border Control, the steward in charge, Mick Collier. The three judges scoring at ringside of the 10-point bus system. Jeff Hines, Ian John Lewis, and Bob Williams. When the action begins inside the ring, referee in charge, Terry O'Connor. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the judges are ready, the fighters are ready. The world is ready. London, make some noise if you Introducing to first, fighting out of the red corner. Wearing white trunks, he weighed it officially 16 stone, 13 pounds, or 237 pounds. This professional in 29 bouts stands perfect with 29 victories. No defeats, 21 big wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of and representing Bonzo, Switzerland. Here is the undefeated Arnold the Cobra. And across the ring.
ring stands his opponent fighting out of the blue corner, led by his trainer, Shane McGuigan. Wearing tonight, white, trimmed in black and gold, he weighed in 16 stone, or 224 pounds. In 29 professional bouts, his record, 27 victories, including 25 knockouts, just two defeats. He is the fighting pride of South London, England, the former unified WBC, WBO, WBA Cruiserweight World Champion, the former WBA Heavyweight Champion of the World. Here is the Haymaker, David. So referee Terry O'Connor brings the two boxers together to receive their Possibly final instructions. I you know what I expect. Put shake hands, best of to both. Here we go. God bless you. So during that brief coming together, the height advantage enjoyed by Arnold Jajai apparent. How much will he be able to capitalize on that as he prepares to square off against the speedy, elusive David Hay as he continues his ring return? Second up, first round. So here we go then, the first of the scheduled 10 three-minute rounds in this heavyweight main event contest between the former two-weight world champion David the Haymaker Hay wearing white trunks trimmed with gold, his opponent the undefeated Arnold the Cobra Jajai wearing solid white trunks with the bunch of advertising logos all over the legs. The first coming together, and David Hay immediately looking to tee off with hooks and uppercuts Jajai walking in behind a high-held guard, his body is rather open as his elbow just played and a thunderous right hand straight through the guard has put Arnold Jajai on the canvas with just 40 seconds elapsed on the clock. Tremendous straight hand and it didn't hit him flush, just hit him on the side of the glove but enough to jerk his head back, he's in trouble here. Jajai in desperate trouble, retreating to the ropes in survival mode, covering up with more than two minutes to negotiate of this opening round. Hay firing an uppercut but missing, but there is still a long way to go in this opening stanza for Arnold Jajai to get to another right hand through the guard, buckles his knees, and Jajai being exposed to a difference in levels here. His undefeated record doing precious little to help his current predicament. Fires a right hand back in desperation, but it is all David Hay through the opening half of this first round. Yeah, Davis just now changed his tactics a little bit. He's trying to get him to open up. Jerjai walked into him to begin with. Now he's he's back in, backing off of the high guard and being defensive. So he's harder to hit clean. Backing off, but finding himself confined towards the ropes. David Hay looking incredibly relaxed. Not a hair out of place to this point while the face of Jerjai has been reddened. And he's realizing that this is an entirely different sport from what he's been used to to this point in his career. He's been precious little in the form of offense. Hasn't quite fully entered survival mode yet. But he's really not letting his hands go with any type of bad intentions through this point of the opening round. So Hay doing exactly as he likes, operating out of center ring. Jajai just trying to stay out of harm's way and punching range. So just close him down, he's got to walk him down, use that jab, step in close so he's not overreaching with his punches, and then land the shot up high and bring his guard down. Because he's, he's being cagey now, Jajai, he's keeping those hands very high, hard to hit him clean, so he's just got to be patient, David. Jajai putting on the earmuffs now, bracting his head with his hands, trying to repel and parry those shots that are crashing home from David Hay. Right hand strays around the back of Jajai's head. But it's all David Hay throughout the course of this opening round, pawing with that left hand, looking to find an opening for his right that put the man over in the first 40 seconds of round number one. And the right hand has sunk him down again. Jajai is complaining that it's behind the back of the head. Yeah, but he's bit falling of for a second time. Yeah, a little bit of cardiology there. He tried to get away with it, and uh, referee Terry O'Connor done the right thing. He said, "Up, stop, man." It makes an ordinary day feel epic, and opens our eyes to amazing things. It can inspire us.
comfort us and bring us together. It doesn't just put the world in front of our eyes, but the universe at our fingertips. This is the power of television. This is TV. This is Samsung. Hamming it up a little bit. So we move into the second round. The first round was a dramatic one as David Hay put his man on the floor twice. Still not clear whether the second knockdown was counted. Referee Terry O'Connor didn't issue a count, but after receiving a right hand that he complained was behind his ear and towards the back of the head, Arnold Jajai sunk to the canvas for a second time after being dropped by a right hand straight down the pipe at around the 30-second mark. And the left jab has put him on the floor this time. David Hay in complete control. Arnold Jajai completely overmatched. Takes a trip to the canvas for the third time yeah. in the second the round. I think he took a dive there. So they weren't very happy about that. I saw your fighter, Conrad, the middleweight, put a man on the floor with a left jab last week in Bristol. David Hay doing the same thing here. Sugar Ray Leonard put Wilfred Benitez on the floor with a straight left hand. Kel Brook did the same on his way to the world title as well. But it's a rare occurrence to see a boxer get floored with a jab. And Arnold Jajai just appears to be looking he's to a place to fall. He's getting every time he's hit here, isn't he? He appears to be looking to a place to fall here every time he's hit with a shot. David Hay, well, I'm sure he's received more opposition during sparring than he's receiving here. Arnold Jajai being completely overwhelmed. And for the second time in the round, Arnold Jajai has taken a trip to the canvas. Completely overwhelmed, completely dominated. And I think Terry O'Connor is going to wave this one off because the fight has been punched out of Arnold Jajai. And with 1 minute 23 remaining in the second round, David Hay climbs the turnbuckle because Arnold Jajai had just been consigned to his first professional loss. Blitzed into oblivion on the floor four times. Once in the first round, then at the end of the first round, which we're not sure was counted. Then in the second round, he was dropped by a jab and then a cluster of punches just sent him wobbling to the canvas. Arnold Jajai being exposed to a level completely beyond what he's been used to to this point in his career. And ah. David Hay continues his successful ring return as he continues to build momentum as he hopes to get himself back into contention for a shot at the heavyweight crown. Yeah. Every time we hit this guy, more that of a better chance to have a look at it here. A solid looking jab. Let me have a look at it again. This is the end. He's chopping away around the side. Look at his legs every time he's hit on the head. His legs seems to be shaking right to the, to the floor every single time he's hit. Well, no disrespect to Arnold Jajai, but it was a step up in level. But I suspect that David Hay has received more opposition and more movement from the heavy bags in the gym than Arnold Jajai was able to offer tonight. Completely overwhelmed, completely outclassed. But as he said, David Hay in the build-up to this contest, you don't get paid for overtime. And he scores the sixth second-round knockout of his career. His 18th knockout inside three rounds. Arnold Jajai really has been exposed to a painful truth tonight. That is, the a lot more, he has a lot more seasoning to acquire if he hopes to advance towards European contention in his own professional career. So he's either going to grow from this or have his confidence severely dented. No such problems for this man. He's knocked out another opponent inside of three rounds. And he continues to build. Ladies and gentlemen, comes the official time. One minute, 35 seconds. Round number two. Referee Terry O'Connor puts a halt to this bout. Your winner by TKO victory, the Hangmaker, David! So, David Hay jumping for joy in the center of the boxing ring, and having been declared a second-round knockout winner. 
over Arnold Jajai, who was outgunned, overmatched, and outclassed during the course of that two-round contest. David Hay demonstrating plenty of punch power, and the crowd in attendance here once again demonstrates that he is a serious box yeah. office draw. Absolutely. And those two Paul. qualities yeah. will make him a serious person to be talked about in the heavyweight mix. Without a doubt, yeah, I mean, the place is absolutely packed here. And, uh, you know, you have to say, I thought those punches that hit him, the first right hand is a very solid right hand. Didn't really get a look at the jab again, so want to have a look at that again in slow motion. And at the end, he was so badly beaten up. Every time he got hit with a solid shot, he shook to the, gr to the floor. His legs were very shaky every time he got hit. So good destructive job. And now we need to see him move on and uh, either fight for an eliminator or fight for a title. Well, David Hay was ranked number six by the WBA coming into this contest. Shannon Briggs was ranked number seven. And according to Shannon Briggs, if he won and David Hay won, then both of them would be sharing this ring here at the O2 Arena. Now, perhaps given their ranking, that could be elimin an eliminator, maybe not a final eliminator, but perhaps an eliminator for a WBA title. But both men have completed their jobs. They've won impressively here tonight. And so will they be sharing a ring in September? Let's see if David Hay reveals any of his future plans as he prepares to speak with Andy Shepard. So we're in the ring with David Hay, another stunning knockout victory. David, that fight was almost over quicker than the Mark Demore fight. I know you want to get some miles yeah. on the clock. How did you feel in there tonight? I felt amazing. I really did. I felt sharp, fast. You know, my um, timing was great. A great training camp with Shane McGuigan. You know, a great support team as well. Everybody in Haymaker Boxing, the whole team, have really sort of got together and put on an amazing, amazing event here. I'd like to thank each and every one of your amazing fans who have obviously shown out to, you know, watch the future of the heavyweight division. You know, a lot of people thought I might be the past, <laughs> but, you know, I, be I believe I truly am the future, and I'm looking forward to big fights. Next year, big fights with the likes of Anthony Joshua. For me, that would be a fight I'd absolutely relish. You know, I I I'm a fan of his, but it's a fan. I believe the 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 it's a fight the fans want to see. But more immediately, how did Shannon, Brig how did Shannon Briggs look? You look good? He looked pretty dominant, that's, that's all we'll say. Well, next up for me is Shannon Briggs. You know, he, he came over to England. Yeah, he came to England. He talked a big game. He, uh, you know, I told him if he fights the undercard and beats somebody, I'll fight him in September. So me and Briggs on a collision course, September. Let's go, chump. Let's go, chump. Let's go, chump. Where's he at? David, were you disappointed with the Cobra tonight? I, I know you've only had two minutes of ring time in four years. Did you want more out of the Cobra? Um, my son Cassius, Cass, what round did you say you wanted me to win in? First. First round. He said the first round. I tried to get him out in the first round, but um, he had a good chin. He got up. I'm very surprised he got up from that first shot. That first shot would knock most people out. And as an undefeated fighter, he kept coming, and uh, I had to keep, I had to keep hitting him. But believe me, anybody, including Shannon Briggs, including. Uh, Deontay Wilder, including uh, Anthony Joshua. If I hit them with those bombs, with those haymakers, they're getting knocked out. It's just a matter of fact. There's been some criticism of the opponents you've had in these two comeback fights. Some people saying you should be in there fighting the big name top ranked fighters, but conversely, other critics saying you don't deserve those fights yet because you've been out for three and a half years. What do you say to those two different groups of critics? Well, you can't win. All, all of the big names are currently in fights, so I've got fights scheduled. So I looked at the guy who had the longest unbeaten run. The Cobra had the second longest unbeaten run in, in world boxing, so that's the guy I took on. It's not my problem if I punch as hard as I do, but, you know, big shout out to Maz, to Boswell, all the people who supported me over the years when I've been injured, my family, friends, everybody really stuck, got together and gave me the belief and the drive to get back to where I am today, and that's knocking on the door of a world title fight that I'll bring back to South London. Again, this is only your second fight in, in four years. Did you, did you find anything out about yourself in that fight? How was your timing, your movement? My timing felt great. In the first round, I was trying a little hard. Once I knocked him down with that big shot, I just wanted to lay gloves on him. Um, my right shoulder feels beautiful. It feels better than it ever has done before. The shot I was hitting him with at the end against the ropes was the muscle that I uh, needed, that subscapularis that rotates your arm inwards. That was a muscle that I couldn't use before. So I think uh, the Cobra can, can attest that my right shoulder is back to 100% form. 
There's been a bit of talk about your weight this week, Lennox Lewis making comment. You came in three and a half pounds lighter than the Demore fight. Is that still a work in progress, finding the right weight? Yeah, I'm not focusing too much on, on what I weigh. I'm focusing on performance. And in the gym, I'm punching hard. I'm punching a lot. I could do that for 12 rounds. It wasn't a heavy pace, but I don't allow my opponents to set a good pace because I punch so hard. They're so worried about getting hit. You know, they, 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 they faint before they throw their punches. But I'm just happy I'm here. You know, happy my son saw me knock someone out. It's the second time he's been to one of my fights now. And uh, I'm just happy that he's here. My whole family's here. And um, believe me, I will get the heavyweight title again. And I'll bring it back, bring it back here. So just thanks for supporting me, everybody. I'm, I'm humbled by each and every one of you coming out tonight. And um, I love you all. And I'll be back, I'll be back in September to knock out Shannon Briggs. This is your... Where is, Where is Shannon Briggs? Where is Shannon Briggs? I've got a feeling Shannon may be on his way. Uh, this, is, this is your second training camp with Shane. Uh, how have things evolved from the first? Shannon, where you at? Get your ass over it. Gives all the talk. Now he's seen me knock someone out. Let's see what he's saying now. Do you expect more from Shannon Briggs? Again, you've, you've, had, you've had two and a half rounds in four years. Do you expect to go further with Briggs? He talks a lot, but what I did tonight, I think, proves that I'm, I punched way too hard for him. You know, a former two-time two heavyweight champion of the world, but that was a long time ago. No, 2016, this is my year. All right, let's go to Matt now.